Speak up, please, because Russ. Yes, uh, John Franco, do you have any thoughts about the cultivation of nonconformism? About sorry, cultivation. cultivation or education of nonconformism? Yes. Um, I think that uh, cultivation can uh, uh, you mean, for example, academic uh, and uh, a sort of. I think that it is uh, mm, uh, that it can uh, uh, more strengthen uh, our prejudices than uh, than uh, raising them. That is, uh, in um, in. A, academic uh, cultivation, there are uh, very fixed, very stable models uh, uh, of thought. And uh, um, from this point of view, I think that uh, it is surprising to see how much uh, um, uh, the classifications, the, 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 the divisions which uh, I, I'm talking about philosophy, has uh, uh, used in, in, in ages uh, have been uh, a strong way to uh, confirm, to make stronger the models which uh, uh, the humanistic model, for example. So I do not really think, for example, uh, if we look at the philosophers who have tried to 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 put under to to, to, to discuss this attitude. I think that there are very uh, <coughs> outsiders in the history of philosophy, like for example Montaigne, who was not uh, an academic thinker, but who, uh, of course, he was very cultivated, but his, uh, his uh, readings were very original. They were not dictated by a particular hermeneutic uh, leading to this uh, exact interpretation of the text and so on. He was very free in this. And uh, as a matter of fact, uh, he was uh, educated by a very uh, strange father, a father who was, uh, uh, as I always say my students, he was a very sweet man, a very, very particular man who uh, did not exert any authority on him, and he was a very uh, non-conformist father for, for his times. And uh, he was educated at home, of course, on the books, so he was very cultivated, but uh, he had a sort of by side uh, approach to literature, to philosophy, and so on. So I think that the mainstream view on uh, which we can uh, obtain by an academic education is not so favorable to non conformism to... okay. Luckily, there are many books, and uh, so in books you can find also different positions. We know that sometimes uh, a very ancient book can uh, trigger a process of uh, non-conformism toward determinate ideas. But I think that, in particular, academic education, the one we give here in classes, is not so good for it. <laughs> okay. More questions? Jean Franco, how do you balance the situation where conforming to important moral principles is a good thing and conforming in some other ways may not be necessarily, it may be better to be non conformist? So, but I, how do you make the balance? Okay. Uh, well, I think that uh, um, in an a conformist position is uh, very, uh, in, in general, in education, is, uh, of course, it is necessary. We do not want to make our children to be outsiders. This is very important for uh, any parent. And uh, I think that uh, uh, in uh, modern society, this is uh, uh, even more difficult since uh, Behaviors are controlled. The behaviors of the behavior of the children is controlled much more than in past ages, and there are many ways of uh, how can I say of trying to conform to, to conform the children to determinate uh, uh, behaviors. And uh, since they are four or five, children are scrutinized by many experts. 
and they are, uh, and there is a single model of uh, being uh, which is uh, 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 towards which we are children are pushed. And this uh, is a process which has been uh, examined by many famous philosophers, uh, and uh, Foucault has uh, written good, good pages on this. So this is a process of uh, uh, normalization, a, a process of homogenization of. Uh, and I think that it would be uh, the, to, do, to, 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 to produce uh, the unhappiness of the child uh, to, uh, to, 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 stay, to make him stay out of this, uh, of this uh, model. But I think that it is necessary in a certain sense because uh, otherwise, uh, uh, because I think that the great problems of uh, the great moral problems, but not only the moral ones of our life, are, cannot be cannot be solved. Uh, that is, uh, um, I think that uh, you need to be, uh, in a certain sense, uh, uh, at the beginning at least, you must. A minority can never be uh, a very, uh, how can I say, a very. Uh, well accepted group, a minority in general suffers in the situation, situation. So, um, I think that uh, the balance should uh, be in favor of non-conformist uh, position because, uh, at least in education, and I've seen by experience that in many, uh, in many situations a non-conformist uh, upbringing is very useful because uh, the, the, uh, the, it, it's very easy for society and for a non-conformist being to find his way to cope with, 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 real, with the, the real life. An intelligent non-conformist uh, young uh, man or young woman easily finds uh, his way towards uh, a good coping with reality and with what society asks. But uh, if he lacks this uh, spirit, if he lacks this uh, capability of uh, looking things in a different way and uh, having different models, he will never find them uh, in society. So I think that, uh, in my opinion, a good process of education should uh, start with a uh, less conformist way and then, then uh, let uh, a normal approach to, 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 with the sense of reality much more than the, 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 the opposite way. Yes, please. Can yeah. I guess it's more of a comment that uh, the equation of identification and empathy, I have a problem with, and I'll, I'll comment on that in my paper later. But I, in terms of the current discussion, uh, I have a problem with uh, framing education in terms of conformism and non-conformism, because I think the center of education critical thinking. And critical thinking is what allows you then to conform or non-conform. So I think the student needs to walk away with this ability to critically think, not just adopt a model or not adopt a model. So I, I have a problem with that. Yes, I think that, okay, this is, of course is very important. I would answer that uh, what is surprising uh, in uh, this, it's that uh, if you belong to a particular group, social group, uh, the ideas you share are uh, uh, almost uh, about everything. You share almost the same ideas about everything. That is the differences in a social group between what we think of life, death, animals, love and so on are not so relevant. If we go towards, in a, in a different culture, if we uh, take just, uh, we just go in uh, 3,000 3, kilometers and go in a different country, we empathize for different things, we eat different things, we think different things about women, about uh, children, about work, about so many things. That I think that the cohesion of uh, the, 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 the homogeneity of uh, um, of uh, social groups is so strong in my opinion and it is easily seen as I said as, as, as soon as you uh, take a plane and go in a different country that uh, I think that the real uh, the real uh, effect of education is exactly 
uh, a conformist view, that is uh, to make people uh, feel exactly the same things. I think that the idea that education is an education to a critical thought is a, of course, is a very great uh, uh, thing, but um, in my opinion, this is uh, uh, so rare and so uh, particular because if you accept a critical uh, thinking uh, and if you teach critical thinking you must accept that your children go away from you that uh, because they have a different opinion than yours otherwise it would not be it, 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 you, it is, this could not be critical and that you must accept the possibility of a complete uh, a completely different way of understanding life and so on. So it uh, implies a very uh, a degree of freedom which is not so present in my opinion in any kind of culture, in culture, in any kind of society. So I think uh, that uh, this uh, education to critical thinking is a great thing but uh, I think that it has great limits. It is the critical thinking we teach to Young, uh, to young men, I think is has very precise boundaries and is you can freely think from here to here. <laughs> not uh, uh, we do not. Uh, I think that we do not offer a great range of uh, critical thinking. And uh, on this, uh, under this uh, point of view, okay, I, I I think that there are degrees, of course, in this. But I think that a critical education to critical thought. Uh, may be wider than uh, an obtuse education, of course, uh, an education in which uh, the child uh, is uh, bound to do exactly what the parents have already done and uh, do like me and so on. But I think that it's just an enlargement, a little enlargement of, uh, of, the, of the range of education and not uh, a real freedom on this point. You think that empathy should be the basis of our treatment of animals? I think so. so that, that was certainly the original motivation of today course. for your talk. But in a sense, when we are, are empathic towards someone, we have the ability to put ourselves in the person's shoes, right? And so, empathy is our capacity of recognizing ourselves, ourselves in other other persons. Now, I'm wondering whether. Um, there isn't a risk in using empathy as the basis of our treatment of animals because then we, uh, in recognizing ourselves in animals, then we uh, anthropomorphize them, so we attribute to them characteristics that we attribute to ourselves but uh, that animals do not possess. But first of all, I think that empathy should be the basis is necessarily the basis of any moral attitude towards the world, with animals, with other human beings in general. Because even with the environment, in a certain sense, it is. Uh, we do, I, I would not say that we anthropomorphize, but rather to use a, a word which is seldom used, we egomorphize. That is, we uh, put in the other the uh, features of ourselves, of myself, I put the features of myself, it is, I cannot help but doing this, in my opinion, because uh, this, uh, uh, the process of empathy, uh, empathy is, as I said, identification, and this is the, I think, the only way of feeling a bond between us, between me, just to not say us, between me and what is outside me. So, this is a risk. We might project uh, and we might uh, uh, think that uh, the other man, the other woman, the other, the other animal is uh, in a way uh, which is uh, completely different from the way he, it, uh, he or she is, really is. But I think that we cannot do anything different from this because uh, um, without uh, uh, identification Moral arguments are, it is a rational argument on this point is generally uh, without any, has no efficacy at all. I, that is, uh, to think that we should uh, think well in order to uh, act 
well is in my opinion uh, not so 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 correct because uh, mm, you need uh, an, an urge to do you need uh, to be pushed toward the determinate actions you need to be pushed and uh, uh, it is very difficult to accept the idea that uh, the child in his first behaviors is uh, pushed by arguments, is pushed by anything which can be different from uh, uh, a desire to be alike, a desire to be like someone. If you, that is, if you take the, our relationship with animals, with other human beings and so on, in its very source, that is when we are very little, because it begins when we are very little. I think that the, the, we are, our relationship with the others is shaped when we are very little. And uh, the way we define our being uh, towards other beings, I think, is already almost complete or is already, is already very defined much, much, much before, many years before we even uh, learn to, 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 to read a philosophy book or to read a, lo a book of uh, logic. I think that it is those years in which we should try to, sh in which we shape our attitude toward animals. And I do not think that there is another force comparable in strength with the force of the desire to be approved, the desire to be alike, the desire to be accepted. So, if this force, if this drive toward the others is, uh, uh, appears in the very first years of our life, and if it is a desire of being like the others, of doing like the others, children imitate uh, the dog, they put uh, themselves on four legs and try to... Uh, every, everything which uh, we learn, I think, uh, is uh, uh, moved by the desire of, uh, uh, how can I say, of uh, not being a, uh, an exception. So, on this, uh, and at this point, I think that empathy, which is exactly what makes us equal to the other, is uh, the real force. I don't think that this is good or wrong, a good or, or, or a wrong way, but it, I think that it is the, the only way.